recording if all goes well. Um, the objective of today is to um, have a very basic but very simple uh, walkthrough on uh, a couple of important mixed panel methods to make sure that you're able to understand how to use every method, how data gets sent in, and what the implications can be. Um, we'll be using um, a couple of methods. Um, Mixpanel.track, simply to send in your events. Um, it's an event with properties. Mixpanel.register, to set um, super properties. Super properties are something that are linked to client-side SDKs. Mixpanel has client-side SDKs, but it also has server-side SDKs. It will only work, or super properties will only work on client-side SDKs for the simple reason that we're going to set properties once using the mixpanel.register method, and they're going to be stored in the machine locally on the browser. And every time a mixpanel.track call is going to be executed, that call is first going to check, uh, am I having mixpanel properties, super properties, stored in my local on my local cache, on my, on my cookies, in my browser. Um, and if so, I'm gonna grab them and I'm gonna automatically append them to the event I'm sending, even though they were not explicitly declared in that event. It's a very cool way to, or a very lightweight way to add um, properties to an event without having to code them or set the properties manually every time. Now we're going to mix panel identify um, identify methods essentially um, help Mixpanel understand who this anonymous ID was, this randomized ID almost, and map it with something that we call a distinct ID. A distinct ID is an ID that is unique within the context of your company for every client or user that company has. Right? And then we have Mixpanel people.set, and Mixpanel people.set allows us to um, set um, profile properties and actually set attributes on top of users rather than properties on top of events. We'll be using the JavaScript library for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, it's a very extensive library. Um, number two, it's very easy to use this in this demo or in this test and in this showcase. Um, and number three, well, it's a very complete library, meaning that if you understand all of the methods here, well, you're going to understand them somewhere else. Okay. We'll be using uh, this dummy environment that we've built. Um, and as soon as I launch this page, we can actually give it a try. What essentially happens is um, the Mixpanel client side library, the JavaScript SDK is gonna be um, loaded. It also means that Mixpanel is attributing me a distinct ID in the form of a randomized string. Uh, and everything I'm gonna do until my identify call is going to be done under this um, distinct ID. Um, so you see here it ends with FC5, and I'm going to send in my first identifier call, uh, sorry, my first uh, event, which is going to be a, let's say, a button selected, selected, and I'm going to give it a, I'm going to, end it. Uh, I'm going to give it a property, and that property would be button type, and it's a login button. Login button, not really login button, it's a login button. Uh, I'm gonna wrap this up with curly brackets and then poof, I'm gonna send it to Mixpan. If we open this up, you see a bunch of properties. We haven't set any of these properties, right? Uh, we only set the button type to button login. Um, oops, but what you're seeing here is a bunch of properties uh, that start with a dollar sign, that means that they're reserved properties for specific use within Mixpanel. Um, and what you essentially also understand is that they are, in this case, being set by the Mixpanel client side library. Um, and therefore, they're standardized, hence the dollar sign, meaning that they also have a specific purpose. Mixpanel knows what to do with the values that we're getting. Okay. What you see here is that my um, device ID, my distinct ID in this case, because they're the same, right? It's a browser and it's, it's just a cookie that's being dropped on my browser as an identifier. Um, CFC5 is essentially exactly what I showed you here, but also what's more important is that my button type is also still on. Now, if we go to the event stream here, and bum, 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 you see that the button selected event here came in. Under um, CFC5, which is what I just did, and it is a login button. If I would now click into this user, and in the meantime, what we're going to do, we're going to send in another event. And this time, uh, this event would be, because we're kind of mimicking like what you would do when you design a tracking plan, right? 
it will be a mixed panel track. I've selected a bug it, uh, a login button, sorry, and we're now gonna track the event user logged in. Imagine that we're doing this. Oof, I'm gonna set this and then leave this empty, send it in. So now what we're gonna see is if I would refresh, and this usually takes a couple of seconds, up to a couple of minutes. But if I would refresh this, this is basically the identity card or the user profile, let's call it that way. Um, I'm gonna try to give it one more try before we proceed. It takes a couple of minutes, but essentially what in this activity feed, what you would see is if we wait long enough, you will not only see a mix panel track button selected, which is essentially what we did before and which is now visible, but you would see a user login. It's not important right now. What is important is we're kind of in this narrative of somebody clicking a button, they successfully logged in. And at that point, a couple of things happen in the business logic when you translate your business logic into um, Mixpound. Um, first, what we're going to do is we're going to set um, Mixpound of register. And register is like I explained, it's kind of these um, properties that you've set, that you set. Sorry, I'm on a Microsoft keyboard with a Mac. So I'm trying to do button combinations or keystrokes that, that sometimes I, I mix up. Uh, but essentially what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna state a couple of things. Um, so let's imagine that we're very much interested in um, uh, mixpanel.register, what things do we want to append? Imagine we are a video streaming platform for sports videos and um, I just logged in and I now understand that I'll show you that later. At, at the same point, a couple of things will happen. This event of logged in will be sent. A mixed panel register method will be used in order to store things locally so we can append it to your events going forward. And a mixed panel people set um, method will be used in order to set a couple of uh, profile properties on top of the user. Um, imagine that I'm interested in the subscription type. Um, subscription plan, whatever you want to call it. And at this stage, I am a premium user. So you see, no, nothing is happening. We have undefined, nothing is really happening. If I would go to the event stream, nothing would be happening because essentially this is a command or a method. The only thing it does, it sets locally uh, a couple of parameters. And this parameter is in this case, subscription plan equal to premium. Imagine that going forward, and I'm kind of like jumping ahead here a bit in, in our narrative of somebody selecting a button, logging in, and then doing something else, just to show you what, what it does. Uh, Mixpanel.track, imagine that uh, I select a video, video selected, because this is a video streaming platform or functionalities, or story and a narrative, the business logic we're mimicking at least. And we're gonna do this. You see, I on purpose or purposely left the properties empty. Now, what you see here is if I would open this up, you have the bunch of properties like we had before. But here, what you see is subscription plan is premium. And that's because we've set people that register to subscription plan equal premium. Anything that I would send as of now going forward on this machine after, after I logged in and after I've set this register and I've, I've done my things um, is basically this subscription plan premium being appended to the user. Now, Let's have a look if we can actually look into that. And you see in the meantime that the data is coming in and, and everything is being kind of like synchronized. Um, you see here mixed panel properties. You see here subscription plans premium. Perfect. That's what we want. Now what we're going to do next is obviously like I logged in and I kind of jumped ahead by immediately doing a track. But in the meantime, uh, simultaneously what you would do is you would, you would do an identify call. And an identify call... Um, uses something called a distinct ID. I'm just typing it here. This is not how the command works, but this is this is what it looks like. So if you would ever need to find documentation, it's called a distinct ID. And a distinct ID is a unique identifier that every user has that is unique within the context of the company. So in my video streaming platform, I am uh, user Glenn uh, human 37 and I'm born in 1989. This is just to make sure that I have a unique string, right? That I haven't used in any tests or in any demos before. And so I'm gonna send this in. What's happening now is, is actually very important. You're gonna see an identify call again if we wait long enough, right? Um, come in. But what's essentially gonna happen is, is this a distinct ID as I was known, the CFC5 
is now going to be merged into an identity cluster with distinct ID. I don't remember what I actually used. Glenn Human 37 1989. I'm going to copy that. Kind of use a unique string there. But if we wait long enough, all of this stuff would be added to the activity feed. And actually, here you see it already. CF. C5, which was my distinct ID before, which was attributed to me by the mixed file library. And now my distinct ID is also added to this identity cluster, Glen Human 37, 1989. Why is this important, this identifier methods? Because if I would go on another machine, if I would go on my mobile and I'm on the streaming platform on my mobile phone, and I would log in, because my unique identifier in the context of your company would then be Glen Human 37, 1989, I would get this mixpal.identify call where my distinct ID would be called even though my anonymous ID on another machine would be different because that would be because of the SDK on my mobile attributing me something or I would be on another browser on another computer or I clear my cache or my cookie expired. At that point you would see another one of these very long weird auto-generated strings. You would not have only one, you would have another one because I'm another machine, I'm another identity there. But you would have this key in order to merge all the data. Um, important to know is that there's currently, at the time that we're recording this, uh, an identity cluster limit of 500 identities. Um, and as of that point, your behavior would be different. But this is kind of out of scope for this uh, video, but it's FYI. If you would be interested, feel free to um, figure out a bit more documentation. Um, what I was saying now, um, imagine that, um, so we had the mixpanel.track, we had the mixpanel.register, we had mixpanel.identify. What I'm gonna do now next is I'm gonna set, because what you've seen obviously or probably maybe, is that this user profile properties, well, nothing is defined, right? It means that I cannot build cohorts based on people properties, not yet. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say mixpanel. Um, people dot set and I have told you guys already that I was born in 1998 so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say year of birth and I'm gonna set it to 1989 I said 1998 right that's 1989 and a bit older um, and so what I'm gonna do is now is I'm gonna set this and essentially what's gonna happen is oof, set year of birth is 1989 I've actually sent it in as a uh, number I could have sent it in as a string doesn't really matter in this case um, I'm not planning to calculate with uh, date of birth at this stage you could at some point um, but voila that's something you should know all of a sudden you see that these cards are filled in obviously uh, this is auto generated and this is I think what you can see here this is all going to be metadata that's going to be captured by the SDK, but it, it's correct that I'm actually the city I'm currently in while we're recording this is Halle, which is the SDK doing a pretty good job. Uh, but what you see here now is year of birth. Um, important to know uh, with people properties is that it only represents the latest value. In, my, in the case of year of birth, that's fine. But imagine that at some point... Um, it's a video streaming platform and to go back to the use case and my favorite sports um, would have been at some point in time let's call it um, Formula One and I'm gonna set it like this if I would refresh this and wait long enough it would actually already be there favorite sport not here yet My favorite sport is F1, but at some point, maybe I said, ah, my favorite sport is no longer F1. Um, my favorite sport is actually uh, basketball, or let's say football. If I would set it here, then you would see now it's Formula One. If I wait long enough, it's gonna be set to football. The thing what you need to know is there's no real history of what the history of the value in favorite sport was. Um, it also means that um, if you're going to ask me show all of the events the users did for who, for, for all the users whose favorite sport was uh, football, you're going to see all of this. Same if I would send in 100 more events while uh, my favorite sport was actually football, but I switch again to basketball. 
um, you would get a complete history of all the events done by a specific user because the latest value is set to basketball at that time. Right? So that's something very important you need to know. In order to kind of circumvent that, typically what we say is that whenever you set a people property, try to set it as a super property. Why? Because at that point, all of the video plates or all the button clicks would be contextualized in the setting of that user at that point. Imagine you could say, like, show me all of the videos that people saw in the context where the super property was preferred sport equal football. At that point, you would be perfectly able to select video plates, break it down by preferred sport, and then show whatever happens. But therefore, you need um, super properties. It's one of the key elements because super properties actually behave like just regular properties that you append to an event, but it also allows us to kind of set context and cast that context into stone, where people properties always are a representation of today. I hope this was useful for you guys. Um, if you would have any questions, then make sure to reach out to human37.com and we'll be able to help.